Hello everyone and welcome back to another video with the Adventures of the Memory Makers. Today just wanted to share a long-term product review uh, with everyone on the heater that we use in Cindy's um, 68 Shasta Compact Camper. Uh, if you've watched the videos before, uh, we did a video a while back and we'll put a link uh, to it in the description for you um, where we went over the camper and Cindy shared it with everyone, um, some of the things that we did with it. And when we originally bought the camper in 2018, the camper did not come with a heater. The original heater had been removed um, some years prior um, by a previous owner and there, and there was no heater in the camper itself. And Cindy being as cold natured as she is, it needed a heater. <laughs> so she had gone through, um, we get a sailboat magazine and, and she saw a, a really neat heater in that sailboat magazine that kind of looked like a small gas fireplace that you would see in a house, except it was just miniaturized and designed to be used on a sailboat. And she showed me that heater and said, do you think you can put this in my Shasta? And I took a look at it and I was like, I don't see why not. So I got to looking at it and it was really very interesting the way that it worked. It's a, a Dickinson P9000. Um, it's a, like I said, it's designed for the marine industry. It's all stainless steel. The, uh, no, it's in the inner. Yeah, I just thought I'd get a close-up of the dials and stuff. And it, the, the nice thing about it for the RV application is that it does not put moisture in the air. So we're all familiar probably with the buddy heater type heaters and the new wave heaters and those type. They're internal venting heaters. So there's no external vent to them. They're very efficient because all the heat that they produce winds up in your, your cabin area. But that said, propane, when it burns, puts off about a pint per gallon. Uh, so you put off about a pint of water per gallon of LP burn. As everyone knows, it has a, an RV. Condensation in, the, in cooler months is always an issue. So to have your heater put off even more condensation inside your camper, that's kind of a, a big negative. So when I, I did the research on this and saw that it, it was actually going to help dry the air because the exhaust goes outside, uh, that was a big plus for me. That and the fact, uh, it's very efficient. Uh, yeah. We've you've been using it now for two years, two and a half years since we got everything done and up and going. We've used it, I guess, 10, 12 nights now on the existing tank of gas that we're running on currently. Uh, we've got dual tanks on the front, uh, but I filled that one up and started scratch with it. Um, and it's got 10, maybe 12 nights on it now. And we run it all night long. We typically camp in cooler weather because um, in the summertime we're on the boat. So we run this just about every night and we typically run it on low all night long. Um, and we found that you can turn this down really low to where the flame is just almost a glow and not get yourself ran out of the, the camper. And that may be one of the drawbacks for some people when you look at this heater is the fact that there's no thermostat. So you are in charge of how high the furnace flame is going to run, and that's going to determine how much heat that you put out into the, the cabin area. And I can tell you right now, I'm getting pretty hot. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it down. Um, and, and to turn it down, there's a stop right there, which is the actual low setting. That's the intended low setting. But you can cheat, push that knob in, and actually continue to turn it down even more. And this is what we typically do at night. We'll have it down to where it's just kind of a glow, kind of like that. Um, and once you get your camper warm, uh, especially with Wilson in here, our golden retriever, he's outside running around now. It's a pretty nice day out. So um, with him in here and both of us, that on a, a very low flame like that, there's been a few times Cindy's woke me up in the middle of the night. I'm hot. <laughs> so I got to get up and, and either turn it off or, or do open a crack a window or something. Uh, so it's not as convenient as having like a forced air furnace that has a thermostat where you can select a temperature uh, and, and get it to maintain that temperature. This is either on or it's off, and then you're in charge of controlling how high that flame is going to be. Um, it does have a, a fan on it that makes a big difference. You can use it without the fan, but it is a lot more efficient with the fan. And the fan itself is on a rheostat to where you can turn it down and up. So even at the highest setting, it, it's pretty quiet. You know, our TV's right there. We can watch TV with it on high, you know, when we're getting the camper warmed up at night when we come in, and that's not an issue. But, you know, at night, we can also turn it down to where it's just barely turning. And in fact, it, I'm really surprised at how low it will go. Um, but that still helps move that heat around inside the, the uh, cabinary. Overall, 
we've just been tickled to death with it. it it's worked every time. Cindy, she got really liked it in the beginning because of the fact it's got the window and you can see the flame. So to her, it's kind of like having a small uh, fireplace inside her small camper. So I think that was the big selling point for Cindy. Um, for me, it was the fact that it's marine rated, it's all stainless steel, it outside vents. Um, it, it just works really, really well. That said, there are a few caveats to it. And I've seen people install these recently in campers on YouTube. Um, and one person, in fact, he didn't have a good place to put it. Um, and, and we really didn't either, but I'll address that here in a second. But he put his way high up in a corner. Well, as we all know, heat rises. So the higher you put your heat source, you know, it's going to be super hot up at the ceiling in order to get any heat felt down towards the floor. And I can tell you right now, you know, the camper floor is not insulated and it's 80 degrees right now on the kitchen counter. I got a thermometer over here and it's not 80 degrees on the floor. I mean, I can feel the cool coming up off the floor. So the higher you install this on your wall, the the greater the differential in the heat will be from up high to down low so ideally you want to try to put this down as low as you can i really couldn't go any lower because our wheel well is right inside this cabinet so i was really kind of limited that as to how low i could get it but i tried to get it down there as far as i could and still you know maintain clearances from the materials and and this this cushion is still cold right here from where it's resting up against the thing. So there, there's really no heat that comes out the bottom. And even on the sides, you know, typically at night, we'll pull this back just a little bit, you know, just to make sure there's not an issue. But um, the wall stays cool to the sides. I mean, it, it does everything that it says it's supposed to do. It's really a neat system, the way that they do the exhaust and the intake, because the cooler the air is outside that you're bringing in to combust, the more it cools this pipe down. Now I will say, you're not gonna grab hold of this pipe and hold on to it. it. It's warm, but it's it's not to the point that where, you know, if you touch it like this, it's not gonna touch you, but you can feel that it's warm. And that said, you know, I've got the recommended clearance back here to my wall and it's, you can tell there's a temperature difference, but it's not too hot to the point where it's going to do anything to the wall. So the way they do this is it's a double wall pipe. It's two and a half inch here on the outside in this flex deck. And then there's a one inch pipe on the inside with like a big coil spring wrapped around it to keep it centered inside of the, the first pipe. And the inside pipe is the exhaust that goes up and out. The air gap around that inside pipe to the outside pipe is where the induction air comes down and that's what it burns. This whole combustion area inside is a sealed unit. So there's no way for the condensation inside and also the fumes to get out into your living space. That said, we do have a, a smoke detector and a carbon monoxide detector up here on the wall, just in case something would go wrong, because it, it is in a camper, it bounces around, it, you, know, you just never know, you know what could potentially go wrong, get knocked loose. So always want to have a carbon monoxide detector in your living space if you're going to be running a gas appliance. Some people just don't have good options to mount a heater like this. And like I said, the one individual, he put it his way up high. So he's gonna to have to have 120 degree air at the ceiling in order to get any heat down here at the, at the floor. So you wanna get this as low as you can in your camper. And the other thing is, is the structure that you're mounting it to. When we first got this camper, I can guarantee you there was not any structure in here strong enough to hold this camper, or hold the camper, hold this heater to the wall. It weighs 15 pounds and 15 pounds doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're holding this thing in place and trying to get it marked where you want it, 15 pounds is quite a bit. So we were fortunate, <laughs> I'm going to say we're fortunate in this aspect. Um, it was a byproduct of the fact that we had to gut this camper. <laughs> okay. See, it turned out to be a good thing. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> so we ended up, you know, Cindy bought this camper, you know, when her eyes glazed over, I knew that we bought a camper <laughs> and she bought it before I had a chance to really address anything with the owner as far as issues. And, and I had no idea how many issues that was going to be. And so because of that, I no longer do negotiations when we buy something. Yeah, you got fired from that. I got fired. <laughs> so we wound up having to strip this thing down to the skins, um, take some skins off, repair things, you know, do, just do a total rebuild essentially without taking it down to the frame. Fortunately, that part was good. Um, but that said, it gave me the opportunity and I'll see if I can find some pictures and, and put them in the video as well to show the blocking that I was able to put in the wall to get a nice solid mount for this camp for this heater to mount to the camper.
And I think that's really important, especially if you're going to put this in a vintage type camper like this. Um, you want to make sure that you've got something solid for it to mount to because 15 pounds hanging out here off the wall going down the road. These things don't ride the smoothest going down the road. So you want to make sure you got a nice secure mount. And then also in the ceiling, this pipe, you know, it requires, and I'm going off memory here, I believe is a three and a half inch hole through your ceiling. So that you've got some air gap around the pipe for that two and a half inch pipe to go through. So the ceiling on this was even weaker than the walls. So while we had everything apart, I was able to put blocking in the ceiling before I put everything back together. And that gave me a nice solid surface to drill the big three and a half inch hole through. And then the trim ring up the top with the rubber seal that comes with it, that mounts down to the roof and screws into that blocking that I put around there. So it gave it a real nice solid surface to mount to. And there just was nothing there before. So if you're going to install this in, in a camper that's already finished or that you don't have access to those areas, you want to be careful to make sure that you can find, you know, studying inside the walls or some sort of structure in order to mount this to. And then also get it down as low to the floor as you can so that you can get some heat down here. Uh, Wilson loves it because he lays on the floor on his pad to sleep at night and he's, he stays nice and cool on the floor. You know, we're up, you know, up at this elevation and, you know, with the heater turned down low and a window cracked, you know, we stay nice and warm. Um, you know, that said, we may have to, to adjust that window during the night to, to get a little more fresh air in or, or whatever it takes to, to maintain it because there just isn't a thermostat. And I, someone asked me one time, can you add a thermostat to it? I think you'd have to redesign the heater because it just isn't designed with that in mind. Um, there, there's no mechanism for the thermostat to go inside of it. It just wouldn't be a, a plug and play type modification to do that. So, so I really don't think that that is an option. Now, one option that I do strongly encourage, if you're going to put this in your, your camper, your RV, and you're going to go down the road, um, it comes with a bell top, and I'll, I'll show a picture of that up on the roof, that covers the exhaust so that you, know, you get, get rain and stuff down there from the top. But when you're going down the road, they make a what they call weather guard, and that goes in place of that small bell top, and it's this stainless steel cap right here. And they make several different sizes of this uh, based off the year model that the heater was made in. I believe the serial number as well. If you just contact the company, they can tell you which one of these that you need. I know that because I got the wrong one the first time and <laughs> had to contact the company and find out which one I needed. But this goes in place of that bell top and it goes over the whole assembly up there and rest on the trim ring. And then the wing nut goes on here. And when you tighten that wing nut down, it compresses this down and creates a lock on the wing nut. I've never been worried about losing that nut going down the road or my $70 weather guard cap. <laughs> so, you know, that I really encourage because if not, you're going to you know go down the road in the rain and, and bugs and stuff and, and get that in, potentially get it into your pipe and you don't want that. So if you do do this, do do this, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> if you, yeah, if you install one of these in your RV, strongly recommend you get the weather guard. Uh, to put this on when you travel. Um, and we pulled into a vintage uh, rally uh, last fall and someone spotted that immediately. Remember when he came over mm -hmm. and asked us, uh, he saw this sticking up on the roof and knew right away something was different because this doesn't show up on, on vintage Shastas. Um, you know, we didn't go back original on our camper. You know, we, we basically made it the way we wanted it. it. It's far from original, obviously, because these didn't come in originally. So um, definitely strong recommendation to get the weather guard if you're going to put it in your camper. Um, I checked that this thing is rated at 4,000 BTUs on high and on low, I think you can turn it down. The low set in believe is 3,500. And then you can, like I said, you can cheat it and turn it down even lower. So that you just got to glow to put off heat. So we have used it now every time that we've gone out in the camper, we've had this heater running and we've also, you know, we've got a gas powered light for some reason. I just really like that gas powered light. And then we've got a, you know, the gas powered stove and the oven, and we use it quite a bit as well. We've baked several things in it. So I would have thought that we have used quite a bit of gas uh, because this is running, you know, eight hours a night, you know, easy while we're in here. The light we have on probably, you know, five or six hours, you know, in an evening. So I was really kind of surprised. I used my Flame King propane scale, and I'll put a link to this in the description as well. Um, but there are, there are numerous ways to determine how much propane you have in your tank. Um, you know, there's Bluetooth devices now that go on underneath your tank. I've got so many tanks, I'd go broke buying Bluetooth devices. So I picked this up. I think it was like 
twenty dollars or so. To be honest with you, I don't even remember. Um, but it physically weighs the tank. It knows what, and you can select between twenty, forty, and like fifty pound tanks or something on this. Um, and just you know, once you get your tank selected, you hang your tank by this hook, and then just lift the tank up, and it gives you a percentage of how much gas is in it because it knows what the tar weight or the empty weight of that tank is. So very simple. You know, twenty bucks versus you know hundred dollar you know Bluetooth you know, for each one of these tanks, you know, I, I just, I can't justify that. So I, I picked this up and this works very well. So that said, I checked this tank that we've been running on for, and I think it's 10 or 12 nights now, and we were right at 50%. So I don't know, I'd have to read the instructions on this to see how it figures that. So the tank is only filled to 80% capacity when you get one filled. So is it at 50%, you know, and we've only used 30% of that tank, or is it at, 50% of the full weight, that I can't tell you. What I can tell you is we haven't moved, used much fuel in, in 10 to 12 nights of camping. So just thrilled with that aspect. Um, I, I originally didn't want to put dual tanks back on the camper because I just like the look of a single tank on a camper this small, uh, but really couldn't find a, a holder that I liked. So went back with the double tanks. Now, after seeing how little amount of fuel we've used for how much we've used it, now I'm reconsidering that. I might go back to a single tank setup. What about a price point? How much are those heaters? So that's an interesting thing. There are several places to get them. You can order them direct from the company, which is made in Canada, British Columbia, uh, and they're pretty proud of them up there. So when I bought this one for Cindy in 2018, I got it from a company in Miami, of all places, selling heaters. Um, at the time, they had the best price. Today, a company called Sure Marine, which happens to be the same place that I got the Propex HS2211 for the, the Bushwhacker teardrop, and I'll put a video link to that in the description as well if you want to check that out. They have the best price today for this heater. They're in Seattle, Washington, and today I believe it was listed at $893 for the heater itself. And then we needed an extension uh, to get higher. It comes with a 28-inch um, piece of exhaust. We needed the extension pipe, and I think I probably bought the longest extension pipe, which was like another $150 for that. You're looking at $70 for the, the travel guard. So it's not a cheap heater, but quality heaters today for an RV like this, you know, our Propex was over $1,000. You're going to have about a grand in this by the time you get everything. Now, the one thing I will say about Sure Marine the shipping was very salty. <laughs> I mean, I, I asked them if they could strap my Propex to the back of a turtle. I didn't care when I got it. I just didn't want to pay that much for shipping. Uh, but, you know, shipping it today, if, if you can't get free shipping through a company like Amazon, you're going to pay dearly for it. Because So, you know, figure a $1,000 price point for this heater, you know, with the attachments that you need to get it, get it hooked up and going. Uh, the gas line, you can run a, a flexible gas line to it. Um, this camper, you know, came from the factory, the rigid copper gas line. So I, I kept it somewhat original running that there was already a, a access point underneath the counter to get the gas line attached to the system for it. So, so that was not a big deal running off the same regulator as, as the stove runs. So overall installation was really pretty straightforward. You just got to make sure in a camper like this, that you've got, you know, a solid surface to mount that to. Unfortunately for us, we had the part and we were able to to add that as we went. And I am just flat burning up sitting here next to this heater. <laughs> How did I get a picture of it's 44 outside and 80 degrees? No wonder you're hot. But you don't do 80 very well. No, it's got to be 85 or 90 right here beside it because <laughs> I can feel the heat coming out. I've got so it was it wasn't as low as if it could go on the fan, but it was pretty low. And even with that, I mean, it's just like sitting next to a blast furnace. <laughs> but overall, you know, after two and a half years of using it, like I said, we've owned it since 2018. It just took a while to get the camper to the point where we could, could use the darn thing. Um, it's worked every time. Now, some people and I've read some reviews on it and some people don't like the fact that you have to open it up to light it. I get that. Um, but it's a situation where we open it up once in the evening, we light it, and it stays lit all night long. So, you know, for the type of heater that it is, how well it works, the simplicity aspect of it, I'm okay with the fact that you got to open it up. Now, one thing that, that I have thought about doing, and, and I saw this, um, an, an individual had this in their sailboat, and he liked to be able to see the flame a little better. 
he actually took the door apart. It's only held together with these four screws on the front and he removed the grill from the glass. So that way it just gave you a clearer view into the flame. I've thought about doing that several times, just haven't taken the time to do that. So that grill is just for aesthetics only? No, I, I'm, purpose? I'm sure in a marine application, you know, when you're under sail and you're in the waves, things are bouncing around. Um, you know, I don't know if they did it as the manufacturer just thought it would be a good idea or the marine regulations required that. Uh, but I'm sure that that is protection for the glass. So in case something would come flying across the cabin in the boat and crack into your glass, because it will still work with the door open but it's not going to be a sealed heating device at that point so then you're dumping all the the humidity and stuff in the air plus the the fumes from it so you know i'm sure it's not recommended by the manufacturer to take that grill off but that individual did he liked it much better so you know take that with a grain of salt you can do what you want on that um, i probably will because you know when we go down the road we we stow everything i'm not worried about something crashing into it so that is an option you know like i said i'm not recommending you do that i'm just saying others have done it and we may do it as well so overall thrilled with the heater um we're two and a half years into it still works just as good as it did from, from the start I, it's a simple, very simple heater, so I don't think we're going to have you know, any long-term issues with it. And um, you know, it just does everything we want it to do. So are you happy with it? I love it. I mean, it works and it's pretty, so what else is there? There you go. So I'll, uh, like I said, I'm going to add a few pictures to it of the top cap, and I'll put the travel guard on the, on the flue at the top so you can see what that looks like when it's attached. Very simple. The, the one thing about that is our camper is high enough that it helps to have a step stool. I can reach it off of the step. Um, it's it's kind of awkward to do it, but I can do it. It's easier if you have some sort of stool. So depending on how high your camper is and where your exhaust is at on the top, you may need to take that into account as well. But uh, two thumbs up for the, the Dickinson P9000 uh, propane heater. And we'll catch everyone on the next video. See you soon. So this is the bell top on the the exhaust pipe that comes up out of the roof. This is the trim ring that mounts down to the roof. And like I said, I put blocking on the inside of the roof so that there's a solid structure for it to mount to. Uh, Cindy's gonna be using the camper yet today, so I can't top, pop that off just yet. But there, you can see the wing nut on top. You just merely undo that wing nut, and then this top cap right here comes off, and you replace it with your travel guard. Slip it over there, the stud comes up to the center of the travel guard, put your wing nut back on, and you're good to go down the road. You don't have to worry about rain or anything else getting inside your exhaust.